It's a pleasure to be here sharing our experience about our one-to-one -one ready journey and how we are trying to create internally from the research team working with other departments the internal quantum mindset. We started two years and um, half ago part of our research effort in our Horizon 3 project with impact in more than three, five years, understanding the potential of quantum technologies and we put the focus at the beginning in quantum computing. Uh, after the first phase that we call a scouting phase, we research about the state of the art. We decide that makes sense to go in deep because one of our conclusions was the probability to have impact uh, with quantum computing in the less than three years, and this was two years ago, was uh, up to 70, 80% in our criteria. So we moved to the next step that we call the discovery phase. In the discovery phase, we start creating our first a research team with scientists in quantum computing and also start engaging with other departments and other units to understand what are the right problems to start solving, also taking care of what is the impact that these problems could create in the PNL or create efficiency. This is what we call part of our quantum mindset, our uh, prioritization framework for decision in quantum problems. Uh, in this part that the scholastic we will explain later, we decide to go with different partners and different um, uh, providers in six proof of concept with really interesting results. Now we are moving in the phase three of our continuing journey with different goals. One is understand what is the end-to-end -end process, how difficult or complex it is to put one to hybrid things in, in production, and also start uh, going to other uh, problems in the organization, mainly in optimization and simulation, not only the one that we make in the proof of concept, and also try to apply to part of our purpose and strategy that is in the long term oriented to giving advice to the people and also uh, taking care of the uh, sustainable future. Uh, I want to highlight, uh, next slide please, Esco. I want to highlight how we start making this as a team. We create an onion or molecule uh, structure, the quantum core team, people working full time on this um, and also what we call internally the quantum hub connection with other business unit and engineering, control, security unit to start creating this understanding of not only the models and the problem but also the solution. And how to integrate the quantum technologies internally in the organization as a bedrock for the future. The quantum network, and if you can go next, uh, Esco, please, is what we call the collaboration that we create with research centers and also with other partners in the ecosystem. Uh, we decide that we need to be agnostic about the hardware because it's not clear who is going to be the winners and our uh, business is not about hardware. So we put the focus in software and models and we decide to test different hardwares and different solutions to understand uh, the evolution and the capabilities of different uh, backends to different kinds of problems and, and models. Also, we are really proud to have the ability to work with uh, CSIC, that is the Spanish um, Research uh, National Center, uh, to create also an, an, an evangelize about quantum computing in Spain and in Europe and other countries, and also work together to discover new financial applications um, uh, with quantum models, one more time agnostic of the backend. And now I think that the best way is to, to give the voice to Scholastico is the leader of the quantum team and the one who with the deep knowledge and also uh, about the, the effort that we are doing. Scholastico, the floor is yours. Thanks, Carlo, for, for your introduction. I'm Scholastico Sanchez. I am the I am a mathematician. I that by chance began and start working in the in the finance world because of the of the bankruptcy of the long term capital manage the hedge fund with scientists in their board like Scholz and, and Merton. And because of that our Securities and Exchange Commission uh, put a position for, for two for two mathematicians and I became a, a, a civil servant in that public public body. So uh, this morning I want to tell you three things and these are the things uh, that we the, the question that we ask ourselves in research 
when we start a recent line. The first thing is which problem are we dealing with? And in this case, our exponential problem. The second question is how do we deal with them today? And it's quantum computing. And I will explain later why quantum computing. And the third thing, the third question that we ask ourselves is what do we propose to this uh, to this problem? And in this case, what we propose is to 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 create capabilities in quantum computing to to become quantum ready and to to bring the edge of opportunity to thought to, to all of uh, our clients. Okay, this is what I'm going to tell you. And now I will tell it. This thing, this thing to you. The first thing is about the problems in quantum and the and the, the problem, sorry the problems the real problems that are exponential. It's not exponential. The 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 correct name is NP hard problem, and this is one of them. For example, with two factors, price and volatility. Uh, portfolio, man portfolio manager practitioners know that when price goes up, volatility goes down, and when price goes down, volatility goes up. This drama in the falling is translated into drama and in the into the volatility of the market. So if to, you take into account this, only these two factors and only uh, a universe of investing of call and put options, the best options, uh, uh, sorry for the, for the repeating these things, is the best option is buying or put or a put options or selling a put options. Buying a put options, <clears throat> a put option, sorry, if, you, if the market is in the mode of risk on, prices, prices uh, climbing and volatility declining, and selling a put options, a put option if the mode of the market is risk off, price declining, plummeting, and volatility increasing. Okay, this is with two factors. In one minute, I have to tell you two, with two factors, but what if there are more than two factors? What if there are 50 or 60 or just 100, 100 for example, and we spend one nanosecond in each of the calculation, there will be, you, we will spend in a classical computer, thousands of times the age of the universe. That's impossible for quantum computing. So uh, I'm going I'm to tell you why quantum computing is here, but I'm go not going to explain you the two main uh, uh, properties of quantum. And these two uh, main properties that are superposition and entanglement. With superposition and entanglement, we uh, mathematically we uh, built a tensor product of vector space. And this tensor product has 2 to n. If we have n qubits, we will have 2 to n uh, dimension. So to some extent, we can deal with a state with all the state bases in it. And we deal with it, manipulate it, and then we measure, and we, we will have what we tend to tend to want. OK, what have we done? We, we have a uh, deal uh, with uh, our uh, business lines. We have been with asset management. We have been with corporate and investment banking. We have been with uh, global risk management. We have been dealing with all this data and with the ecosystem. And uh, we have uh, identified high volume problems in our lines, in our line of business. We, we are trying to be, as, as Carlos mentioned before, we have tried to be a hardware agnostics and, uh, because we don't know which hardware is going to win. And hardware is not our core business. We have applied our research uh, scientific uh, deductive uh, method with three phases. The first phase is this data gathering that I was uh, telling you about before. The second is uh, the hypothesis formulation. And our hypothesis here is that we have a quantum advantage in optimization and Monte Carlo simulations. And after that, we go to our uh, proof of concept. And we are, uh, have done proof of concept in the realm of optimization and Monte Carlo uh, simulation. We have done six proof of concept. We have uh, applied our uh, prioritization funnel. We have collected in our business lines more than 10 problems. We have applied uh, filters of feasibility and impact. And as a result, we have done six proof of uh, concept in the realm of optimization and Monte Carlo simulation. Okay. The first uh, one of the, of the examples in optimization is the dynamic combination of assets uh, or the portfolio uh, optimization, dynamic portfolio optimization, what is called the optimal trading trajectories. In this, we deal, and this is really important, we, we do not only deal with maximizing return and minimizing risk, but we, tend to, uh, we take into account the fees. The transaction cost. It's really important. We have dealt with 52 assets with eight years of uh, of daily data. Uh, so this is really big. This is really big for the classical computing. We have done this proof of concept with uh, our uh, uh, our partner, uh, Multiverse, a startup company. 
and all our results are really uh, at least to the to the extent that, that we know it's the first time that such a big portfolio have been have been used and have been and uh, have been dealt with and the results are really are really amazing for example we have and i'm going to go to the page of the result these are here serve ratio serve ratio is the price that uh, that uh, gives you some risk a unit of risk they will give you the SAR ratio. For example, we have found a portfolio with D-Wave, a portfolio with a SAR ratio of 12. That means with 1% of uh, your, uh, if you can stand 1% of loss, you can achieve 12 times that in the, pos in the positive side, more or less. That's the rule of thumb, okay? And with returns uh, of 60%, more or less. And with a quantum inspired method, uh, tensor networks, we have achieved a portfolio in moving in the moving portfolio uh, that uh, will give us uh, more of 40 percent of, of return uh sharp ratio of uh, uh, 16 okay and now i will give the pass for the i will give the floor for to explain to you another of the proof of concept to our phd andrea cadarso one of our great assets in in quantum in corporate and investment banking please andrea Thank you, Scholastico. It is a pleasure to be here today. So as Carlo and Esco mentioned, in this Quantum Ready journey, there has been a close collaboration between the research and patent team from BBA and different business lines, such as the corporate and investment banking, as well as other companies and startups in the landscape. Uh, the other problem that we were aiming to solve uh, was the valuation of certain financial products with a credit value adjustment. This project has been done in collaboration with the quantum software company Zapata Computing. As a brief introduction uh, for what we are trying to do in the second proof of concept uh, is that in the area of corporate and investment banking of EVA, uh, we provide financial products and services for institutional investors and corporate clients. Some of these products are contracts which depend on the price of an underlying financial asset such as currencies, bonds, or stocks. These products are called derivatives. Finding the fair price of these products can be very difficult. And under certain conditions, it is necessary to consider other costs in this price, such as the possibility of default of their counterparty, that is, the other side of the transaction. So the main reason for this is that since the 2008 crisis, there has been a growing interest and also regulation considering the counterparty claim risk in financial contracts. This can be, can be translated into an adjustment in the price of over-the-counter derivatives, which is known as credit value adjustment or CBA. The problem of calculating CBA for a financial instrument can be reduced to the mathematical problem of performing integration over a high dimensional space. This task is generally hard for classical computers, but this integral can be also solved numerically using a statistical method such as Monte Carlo. The Monte Carlo methods are computational algorithms based on random sampling that can be used to perform numerical estimation of parameters and also to obtain numerical results. In this particular case, we are using these methods for numerical simulation and integration, where we need to average over different scenarios which are simulated stochastically. In order to obtain a result with a specific accuracy, Monte Carlo methods require a number of samples that scale rapidly with accuracy. This scaling cost is related to a fundamental limitation imposed by the central limit theorem for classical algorithms. And uh, this is exactly what we are trying to overcome with quantum computing. Quantum computing has risen as an alternative to improve this classical cost of scaling of Monte Carlo methods. In fact, there are early proposals which point to quantum amplitude estimation to improve the scaling cost of parameter estimation that we have in the classical case. In these works, it is shown that if we consider a classical algorithm that takes n steps to estimate a parameter to our required accuracy, then the quantum algorithm may achieve this task to the same accuracy in O squared n steps. And this is exactly um, a near quadratic speed up over the best possible classical algorithm for a certain class of problems. If n is of the order of billions, then this squared n is uh, significantly, significantly different. 
And in a business application, this would mean a noticeable reduction of time and resources. However, these algorithms need to run deep circuits on a quantum computer, and these are not suitable for near-term applications due to the state of current devices. As we mentioned at the beginning of the, of, of the slide, in order to analyze this problem and potential solutions with near-term devices, we've partnered with Zapata Computing and developed a proof of concept to explore the use of quantum techniques, such as quantum amplitude estimation and the engineer likelihood function technique to obtain the credit value adjustment in a particular case. So our main objective in this work is to understand if it is possible to obtain an advantage with these techniques and what kind of hardware and computational resources we would need to obtain a significant speed up with a noisy quantum device. We're also interested in how these results would scale with the dimensions of the problem, how they would compare with actual classical techniques for a given hardware architecture. So from the business perspective, the experience working with this problem has been very interesting, um, very positive. And there's also a paper in progress, which will be published soon, and which focuses on the results obtained for the CBA of an option with concrete estimate, um, and explaining the quantum speed up depending on the noise and error parameter of the hardware. Thanks, Andrea. Um, thanks a lot. As you can see, we are passing on this. We are Latin, so we, we want to talk. And I hope that you share and you enjoy our experience, our, our journey, at the same way that we are enjoying uh, this. Thanks for all. Thank you very much. Thank you.